I want to talk to us about the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, it's not, there are two judge, there are two judgments. The judgment seat of Christ, which is a place where we get our rewards. Every believer comes into that place. It's not for punishment, it's not penalty, but it's reward. All right? And the other uh, seat of judgment is the great white throne. But this is for penalty. This is for those who continue to resist God and would not want to be saved. Amen? So this is for the unbeliever. There are two thrones, a uh, seat of uh, judgment for the believers and for the unbelievers. Amen. And we will talk about the judgment seat of Christ because we believe. Let me see the hands of the people who believe. Do you believe? Yeah. Let me see your hands. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Raise higher. I believe. I believe. I believe. Okay. So you will be in this judgment seat. Amen? Amen? All right. So why are we studying the judgment seat? Because we've been, we've been going through a lot of training and a lot of studying, a lot of topic. And the recent one was really we're cultivating our uh, a relationship with Jesus Christ, a stronger and an intimate relationship with him. And so we were looking at abiding in the vine and the significance of that and why do we need to abide in the vine. And we said that we abide in the vine because we need to bear fruit. And when you're bearing fruit, you will be pruned. Not because God is, a, is angry at you, but because... He wants you to bear much fruit and fruit that remain. So fruit, much fruit, fruit that remain. Those are the three things. And all of those we said, the relevance of abiding in the vine is we get the sustenance, the life of God from Him. Apart from Him, we can do nothing. And this is what we've been teaching. This is what we've been learning. And then the other thing that we've been doing is we've been cultivating an understanding and a, a relationship with God uh, through understanding and prioritizing the first com and great commandment. What was the first and great commandment, everybody? No. Love no. God no. with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and in Mark 12, 30, with all your strength. And the second great commandment to this is you love yourself, your neighbor as you love yourself. And so those are all relevant to abiding in the vine. You are strengthened by continually uh, abiding in Christ, continually coming into his presence, continually allowing him to be Lord of your life, continue to uh, uh, come into his presence, continue to hear him, continue to speak with him, continue to hear what he's saying. And so that's the reason why we're going to study it, because there is a reward for you. Oh, that's very weak, amen. <laughs> amen. I know, because not very many of us understand that there's a reward. And the reason why we need to understand that uh, we will be, all of us will be, we'll die. Do you not, guys know that? Yeah. How many of you here, you're not going to die? <laughs> you will die. But you will live yeah. that life. And so the, the, the reason why we're going to study this, the judgment seat of Christ, is because we need to understand that there is Hebrews 9, 27. Can you show it? Hebrews 9, 27 says, what is it saying? It is appointed unto a person to die once, then comes the judgment. Do you guys understand this? And uh, how many of you, you know that life on earth is short. <laughs> and uh, I have a note here. I have my notes here because I want you to understand exactly what we're going through. Um, and you, many of you, you are obedient to God. Every every person here has a different degree of obedience, has a different appreciation of obedience, understanding of obedience. And because every individual here will stand with Jesus. All right. Uh, some of you parents, you know, uh, let your children know that this is not a family group uh, promotion. Everyone, every individual, every mother, every father, every brother, every sister will stand by itself in the presence of God. And so this topic, this is a series, a 
and so maybe two or three series to uh, get to it, we will understand why. Because I just believe that uh, in this season, we need to understand that there is a reward to give us not just an incentive to obey God and to do what is right before God and to pursue God. We've been singing it, I'm in pursuit of your presence, God. I'm in I'm, my heart, I'm crying after you, God. I, I, you are all I want, you are all I need. This is our expression. It, it's not just a song, it is a prayer. Amen. It is a conviction. It is a desire. See, most of us, what, we, what we're going towards, you know, we, we've been saying, I've been saying, I've been teaching, and I've been preaching, and you, as forerunners for Christ, you have heard this over and over again. We are entering, and we are already in the last days. And we need to be prepared. We, we, when we were studying Revelation, and we will study it again, but this time more in depth, uh, is we're studying Revelation. We're studying the signs of the times. Why this? This? Why are we studying it? Because it is coming. It is here, actually. And and what the Bible talks about, and the signs of the times that the Bible is talking about, is already here. Amen. Amen. And those that are ignorant of the signs of the times, and will not be ready in these days, in those days, will be caught unaware, and will probably be fearful, and we'll probably have a nervous breakdown when we just melt down. And the purpose of knowing and understanding the signs of the times and the end times, what is it going to look like? That, uh, that, Like when you read Revelation, Revelation is not about the Antichrist. It is about the revelation of what Jesus is and what he's going to do and what his church is going to be. Amen? Amen. And so when you know this, you're not afraid, regardless of what happens, regardless of what trouble comes in this nation and around the world, regardless if an antichrist comes, you are not afraid because you're ready. You know what to do. You are equipped. You are trained. You can discern. You have the, your mouth, the prayers of God. You have the mind of Christ, and you have this decisiveness to trust and fully trust Him. Amen? Amen. And so... And so at this juncture, at this point, I want us to understand that there is a judgment seat of Christ. And that's when you and I will be standing. When, when I die, I'm 76 years old, so you know I don't know how long I have, but I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to face him. I don't have any other escort except the Holy Ghost to take me into the presence of God. And while the escort, my escort, your escort, the Holy Spirit of God is here to escort us every day into his presence. Every day to do what is right. Every day to pray. Every day to be, develop that intimacy so that we do not just have a religion, but we become relational with him. And in that relational, you can be confident. You make him your champion like the song. Your desire and your pursuit is to see, to be in his presence. To see his heart, to hear his heartbeat. And as you get in this place of, of intimacy with God, you become stronger. You have the confidence. And so knowing... <coughs> that you and I will we'll face him, we need to be ready. Amen. Because every one of us will have a different degree of reward according to our pursuit, according to the degree of our intimacy with him, according to the expression of our love for him and the impression of his love for us, we will have a different reward. All right. So let's go. Um, so our life here on earth is short. Anyway, amen? amen? It's like a vapor according to James. And our life, but our life in eternity is eternity. Do you know how long eternity is? There's no end. There is no end. You will live with God forever and ever and ever and ever there is no end Amen. and so i'd like to give an emphasis that on this earth you can only do this while you're alive on earth after you die there's nothing else that you can do 
That's why, to me, the hardest thing to do is to preach in a funeral. Because I know many people lie in the funeral because they say, how this guy is good. But most of those who are dead are not good. They did live a terrible life. Most of them, not all. Some, some. So I don't like you know, preaching, but sometimes you have to. And on earth we live. We live shortly. But it's only while you are alive on this earth that you can start doing what is right. Doing what is godly. Doing what pleases God. Expanding his kingdom. Knowing him. Loving him. Talking to him every day. Every moment of the day. Impacting other people. With your life. With your lifestyle. With God in you. With the godliness that is manifesting in you. With your lifestyle. With your mouth. With your faith. With your belief. With your worship. Amen. 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 And... Uh, so while on earth, we prepare for eternity. What we're doing, what we're doing today. You come on, Wednesday, on Sundays here, not just to warm up the seat. You come here because there is a message for you. There is a worship for you. This is an opportunity to together, we can bring our worship as one voice, with one faith, as one body, because there is a multiplication of power and empowerment as we do this together. Amen? Amen? And so we prepare for eternity. We live for eternity. And we love for eternity. Amen. All of that. That's why it is, uh, I, I have this word here that I was going to ask you. I said, you know, um, so, so you're saved, right? Let me see the hands of those who are saved. Amen. <laughs> But how many are oh, how many of you is wasting your life? A lot of people are saved. A lot of a lot of churches are filled with saved people, they say. They say they're born again. But you know, they need to have a banner that says, I'm born again, because without that distinguishing mark, you can't know that they're saved. Because many people are saved but they waste their lives investing on the things of the world that will fade and will be gone forever. So my point this morning is to take us into the reality that there is a judgment seat, not for you and I to be punished, but for us to get our reward. And let me take you to this scripture. Let's go to, what was that scripture that I said? 2 Corinthians 5.10. And all together, let's read it. Everybody with me. For we must all appear. For all. All, all of us in this room will appear. Okay? Before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive the things done in the body. Pause. The body means everything that you do, your activity, every day, daily activity. You're going to work, you're going to church, you're doing Bible study, you're, you're going to the market, you're going to the grocery. Uh, you, you, you will account for all of those. How did you use your money? I mean, Sister Marlene was just exhorting us on the giving. How did you use your resources? How did you do with your time? All of these things that you did in the body, According, everybody, according, according to, to what, what he has, has done, done, whether good or bad, this is going to be your judgment. Whether you wasted your life, whether you wasted your time, whether you invested it in the flipping things of the world. And many of us, you know, will probably say, watch television too much. You cannot bring the, the, the programs you watch on television before the Christ in the judgment seat. How have you wasted your life? How have you wasted your mind? How have you wasted your eyes where you set your eyes on? How have you wasted your ears by listening to gossip, listening to complaints, listening to murmurings and, and, and complaining? How, how did you waste your mouth by saying words that are fleeting, that are not important, that are destructive instead of constructive and building? Where did you take your feet? What is the condition of your heart? 
How did you use your hands? How did you use your feet? Amen. So this are the accounting. What we really do in the judgment seat of God is making an accounting of your life. What did you do? The question will be probably, what did you do with my calling in your life? Did you answer it? Did you halfway answer it? Did you fully answer it? These are going to be the judgment. Amen? Amen. What else? Let's go to, uh, <clears throat> let's look at, um, what did I put in there? Hallelujah. Romans 14. Romans 14. Let's look at Romans 14. 10 to 12. All right. Romans 14, 10 to 12. Look at this again, where it's talking about, you know, but why do you judge your brother? Because we're, we're always judgmental, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Forgive us, Lord. <laughs> or why do you show contempt for a brother? And, and the real place where we want to read is, for we shall, shall all. Us. There's the word again. All. It's comprehensive. All stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Verse, is that 12? Yeah. So every one of us will make account. I didn't know, I will say, I didn't know you were an accountant, Jesus. <laughs> And the only reason why he's doing an accounting is because he wants to give us our due reward. Amen? Amen? And I want this topic to give us the consciousness and the intensity of understanding that there's nothing that you do that is not affecting your life in eternity. <laughs> Actually, even now, your choices today affects your life and it affects eternity how you worship how you pray how real are you how false are you how hypocritical are you will affect your life your faith in Christ your part in the body of Christ mm -hmm. and you affect your eternity okay um, why is it important I was saying when I was looking at many are saved, but their lives are wasted. They waste it on watching television. And television is not bad, but if that's the preoccupation of your time. Some, some people, uh, my husband is um, working in this skilled facility and many of our Kababayans, you know, Filipinos, they're nurses, and many of them, they have three jobs, hello. Three jobs, or four, and then another part-time job. What are you investing your life in? And I know you need to make a living, but God is your living. Amen. I mean, you know, like, like uh, Sister Marley's testimony, yes, I would like to be a nurse. God, will you do this? Will you help me pass the test? But if my motivation is wrong, the condition of my heart is not right, then I will not even, even if I pass the test, if the condition of my heart is just for my own uh, selfish uh, desire, then I am not investing in heaven. Our lives are saved that we may invest our lives for the kingdom of God, for others to benefit because of his salvation in our lives, that their lives may be better, that they may uh, experience the same love that you and I Receive that they may be saved, fully saved, truly saved, and their lives invested towards eternity. Amen. Amen. I'm not against, you know, money. No. But the love of money. I know many of us, and I, I, I was asking my husband, what kind of life do they have? Uh, they have a house, big house over there, but they work over here, you know, one hour, two hours drive back and forth. And you know, th that's not life. That's dying. 
this morning we were listening to the preaching of uh, who was it Robert Morris where we were getting ready and he said that there is the fourth commandment is uh, uh, love um, mm. have the Sabbath enjoy the Sabbath uh -huh. do the Sabbath none of us do any Sabbath and I was even saying you know on Sundays when we come over here after service I don't know where you guys go I know I just go home I'm old so I just go home <laughs> <laughs> or whatever visit somebody whatever but many times you know our 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 where we go, we do not rest. That's why I am so horrified when he was preaching, when Robert Morris was talking, teaching about the Sabbath day, honor the Sabbath day of the Lord. I was just saying, oh my God, I thought of those guys, uh, Filip uh, Filipino Kababayans with three jobs. And no wonder their marriage are erect. No wonder the children are disobedient and wayward. No wonder because we are not resting. And then no wonder you find yourself, you have cancer. You have all kinds of sickness. You have all these diseases. Why? You did not give your body the rest that God commanded us to have. Even him, he rested after the sixth day. He himself, he's not tired, but he rested. And I believe that that was a command, uh, one of the Ten Commandments, because we are, this is a body, we, this is not a machine. Even a machine has to be shut down to do maintenance. Do you guys understand that? To do maintenance, to be rewired, to be reoiled, to be re, uh, re, rehashed, to be ready again like new. Because you rot, you rest. You wear. Amen. And no wonder sometimes we people, you see people that are so depressed or so stressed out. Why? Because they have failed to give honor to God, to honor the Sabbath. And that's not the preaching today, but that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Everything that we will do. When you were doubting and you're in fear, you will account for that if you did not repent. Amen. That's why a preacher is here. To remind us, even me, I'm a preacher and I remind myself. The word of God is two-edged. One cuts through me and one cuts through you. To remind us that everything, we will account for every little tiny, teeny bit of things that we do on earth. Because your boss is him. Yes. Do you guys understand that? And, and we never, always, we don't remember. Every day we have this, you know, selective amnesia. Mm -hmm. That we don't want to think, we have not taken ownership that God is the boss. Jesus is our boss. When we said to him, Forgive me my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. We transferred ownership from the demonic ownership, from the devil, from the, the, the sin nature. We transferred. We were translated, transferred to the kingdom and the dominion of God. And now he's your boss. And he's a wonderful boss, if you know it. Amen. Amen. So why is it important? Because I said life after, after life on earth, there is a life of eternity. And uh, James said it, that life is just but a, a vapor. I think it's there in your notes. I'm not following the notes if you're, follow, if you're looking at your notes, but I will be there. <laughs> I know. All right. So, uh, you guys understand this? Yes. And I, I am so excited about this topic, and I am so wanting for all of us to understand this accountability. This is, living as a Christian is a privilege. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is so much privilege so that we can do ministry. We can minister to people. But more than anything, for us to see, to understand who God is, to be related to Him, to, be, to, to have developed that uh, 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 intimate relationship, to really know Him. Not just as a religious knowing Him, not just having a religion, but having a relational, intentional relationship with him. Coming to him intentionally. Knowing that if you do not come to him every day, you will not make the day. It's that urgent. It's that real. And I know that many people take it for granted. They go, uh, Jesus, I only have five minutes because I have to go to work. That's not going to work. How about if he goes back to you and say, 
Okay, man, I also have just five minutes for you. Bye. Amen. So we are every day in, in Psalms 90, Psalms 39, 4 and 6, we go. Can you post it? I want everybody to see that. Everybody, let's read it. Lord, make me to know my end, and walk is the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as on breaths, this side, and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but vapor. It just goes away. Salah, meaning rest. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. Take note, busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. There was a story, this multimillionaire guy died. And so everybody was just watching his funeral procession. And one of the guys said to the other guy, he says, how, oh, how, much, how much do you think of the money that he had he took with him? The other guy said, nothing. <laughs> we know this. Unfortunately, we have not understood the, the reality of that, that nothing. And how many people you've seen, right? Uh, uh, they dress them with their best suit or their best gown or whatever when they die. Mm -hmm. Do you know that they don't even take any of those? And I just, just cringe at the reality that the worms would just eat you, your body. And so, hello, stop, stop being obsessed with your body. Take care of it, be healthy, exercise, don't put poison in your body because you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, because you will account for this. I mean, we've seen a lot of the beautiful people, you know, they're beautiful because they have, have all of their faces fixed, upgraded. They're so involved with themselves. They're so involved with the vanishing beauty that will not last. Get to understand this? And this is where I would like for us, you know, all of this, we don't think about it really. We don't pay attention to it. Where do you put your money? What is your ambition with your money? What is your goal? Is it to go to the mission? Or it is just to have consummation? <laughs> because that's what you get. Amen? So teach us to number our days. And th this is the other one, Ephesians 5, 14. See, this is nothing. All of your busyness. It's going to be nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't want you to misunderstand. I don't mean don't be diligent in your job. Don't take care of your family. I, I, all of those. But everything in the balance of putting God first. Amen. Not second, not third. First. Amen. He said to us in, in Matthew 6, right? After he, he preached on the Mount, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, how we live, how our lifestyle should be, he said, you know, but seek me first. I know before that verse he says, I know you need money to eat. You need clothing. You need housing. You need all of this, you know. But he says, but seek me first. Seek first my kingdom and being right with me. Amen. That's what we do. That's his command to us. And the second part, and is the part that he said, I will take care of all of these things. What do you need? You need a house. You need payment for your car. You need help. You need healing. You need matriculation for your children. You need all of these things shall be added to you. Did you forget that part? Because we reverse this verse all the time. We put our jobs first. We put our activities first. We put our parties first. We put what we think we want to do first that will satisfy our body or whatever we are looking for, whatever we're wanting, and then we ask God to bless it. It's not going to work. When you don't 
This is the truth. And I will tell you, this is going to be the truth. I have proved this verse. I have lived this verse. This is a living verse to me. That if I put God first, regardless whether that's my, I, I, I will be left with nothing. If I put him first, all these things, whatever I need, shall be added to me. And I have proven God. I know him. And I love him. And he has always supplied all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to my bank account. Not according to my ability to earn a living. But according to his riches Amen. in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. And our obedience. This is where I want to home run. Our obedience. Our ability to put him first. Our dedication. Our devotion to put him first. And he's not wanting us to put him first because he is uh, a selfish God. No, because putting him first, giving our worship to him, giving our whole life, which he gave to us anyway, but giving it back to him with all intentionality, with all sincerity, with all integrity, giving it back to him, serving him, loving him, you know, developing this relationship, all of that will return to you, good measure, Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And whatever measure it is you've given, shall be given back to you in return. Amen. Amen. That's the reason. Because he knows, apart from me, you will fail. Apart from me, you will be in poverty. Apart from me, your money will eat you. Your money will disillusion you. Your money will bring you to despair. Your money, your property. Actually, one time, when we were in the Philippines, we have this big house and then we have all of these, you know, nice things, blah, 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 all these decorations, all these blah, 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 vase and everything, collections and frames, etc. And this missionary says, uh, when Jesus comes, we're going to do all these things. Because to him, as a missionary, his heart was saying, I cannot accumulate these things because they are excess baggage for me. I need to move quickly. I need to move swiftly. And from there, I really began to understand I cannot accumulate these things on earth because my investment, my life is invested in that which will be in eternity. Amen. You and I, uh, go, go to the next, okay, next verse. Let's look at this. Because I want you to see this. These are scriptures, which is, I think, in your, in your uh, bulletin. Mm -hmm. But we will re revisit it again. Look at this. Um, 40, yeah, go to up to 16. Yeah, 14 to 16. Look at this. This is chapter 5 of Ephesians. And you know that the book of Ephesians, the whole letter from 1 to 6 is so powerful. This is the Magna Carta of our Christianity. This is where we, we understand and we learn the wealth and the treasures and the empowerment that God has given us through his sacrifice on the cross. But over here, he was talking about, you know, in the last days, a lot of things will happen. And he's saying, it, therefore, therefore is because there was, let me see what's in verse 13. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Okay? So verse, therefore, <laughs> All right? Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly. We will explain that in a bit. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Circumspectly, what does that mean? In other words, walk carefully, walk thoughtfully. Walk knowing what God is saying, telling you. Know, uh, a walk, live a life that is in the same lifestyle of godliness. Live according to what the scripture is saying. Live according to righteousness. Live according to the Sermon of the Mount. To love your enemy and do good to them that do evil to you. Hard, but as a Christian, doable. Because we're empowered to do it. We're the only creature on earth that can love our enemies and do good to them that do evil to us. No other creature can do that. Amen. Because we are invested with the love of God. 
Romans 5, 5 tells us that the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And so we are capable. That's why Jesus commanded us to love him with all our heart, mind, strength, and soul. Why? Because he has invested his love, his unconditional love to us. And therefore we can express this love. And the more intimate we become to him, the more, the closer we become to him, the more we will understand and we will be empowered by this love. And so here, he's encouraging us to be wise, not to be foolish. Amen? Amen. Redeeming the time, because the time you lose on earth, you will not regain. Time is the most that we waste. We invest it on something that will not, you will not be able to take in eternity. Our investment, that's why I'm saying, I'm emphasizing, I'm doing this series, because I want all of us to understand to from today, be careful with our lives. Be careful with your choices. Be thoughtful with where you put your eyes. Be, be thoughtful with what you say. Be thoughtful in how you hear and where you put your ears. Be careful where you put your feet, where you walk, where you live, what you do, because you will be accounting for all of those times. And all of those actions to God. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. You will not be punished, but look here. Uh, so you, you need to do this. If you're asleep today, wake up. If you're dead and dying, rise up. Amen. <laughs> all right? This is what the scripture is saying. And Christ will give you light. You will see. You will understand. You will comprehend what needs to be done. And see then that you walk circumspectly. Be careful. Be thoughtful. Let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. For his word is life and light. And so redeeming the time. Stop wasting your time. Invest I, as I'm studying this, I'm the first one. I need to do, not do this. I need to not do that. You know? And I'm, my life has already become so very simple. <laughs> Some people think I'm boring. My life is boring. No, my life is so wonderful, so beautiful. I am investing every breath I have to my bank account in eternity. Amen. Because I'm going to live there forever and ever and ever and ever. And the closer I am, the closer I develop, I, I live my life in cultivating an intimate relationship with God, the more I know him, the more he knows me, the more we are related, and then I am getting ready for that eternity. Amen. 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 So, yeah, go to 1 Corinthians 13, 11 to 15. Look at this. Are you still here? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. I mean, if not, you know, this video will be available and you can re-listen to it. Maybe not in the same intensity that I'm delivering it today, but go to 1 Corinthians 3, 3, 11 to 15. Look at this. Look at this. Read with me, please. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. You know that. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, Hey, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day. We'll declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yet us through fire. You... This is my expression. My understanding of this is you will be saved with the skin of your teeth. You barely. It's just like Jesus will pull you out of fire. Remember, Jesus in Revelation 3 says, I counsel you to buy gold. I counsel you to buy Isaac that you may see. This is the counsel. Why? Because as human beings, our interest is in the things that will fade and will be destroyed. We have no understanding of eternity. But in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 
six, I think it is, uh, it says eternity has been deposited in our heart. We need to understand eternity. As born again believers, we must understand that we do not live on this earth for the sake of this earth. We live this earth so that we might enjoy, train, be trained and be ready for the life after death. That's why many people, you will know, they're afraid of death because they don't know where they're going. Some people don't believe that there's a hell. In the same way, they think just because they're good, they're going to go to heaven. No way. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. No one can go to the Father. No one can go to heaven until and unless you call on the name of Jesus and make him your Lord and your Savior, and you submit your life totally and completely to him. And the rest will live in eternity hell. And they say that hell is so dark. It's so dark you can't see anything at all. You touch the darkness and it's so thick. It's so dark. And it is a place without God. That's why it's dark. Where God is not is dark. Amen. And I want you, I don't want you to be afraid, but I want you to be thoughtful. I want you to be concerned. I want you to make the right decision to invest your time, your money, your resources, whatever is in you, into eternity. And stop wasting your life for things that will be eaten by worms, that will be eaten by rust, that will conquer. Jesus, that's the first scripture that I ever learned. He said, um, I forgot which chapter it is, but it's in Luke. He said, invest in the things of eternity. Invest in the things of heaven. In the things that does not rust. That cannot be stolen. And when, when I saw that scripture, it just jumped on me. And it's, it's another verse that I live. That's why I'm not afraid to give out money. I'm not afraid to go where God sends me. Because I know I am investing in eternity. So here we see that what? He's commanding us. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. But he's saying, uh, build. If anyone builds on this foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw. Now when you begin to come into the wood, hay, straw, you know that those are burnable. Those are combustible. If it's wood, it will burn. If it's straw, it will burn. If it's hay, it will burn. The only thing that will not burn here will be the gold. It will be purified even more by fire. Silver will be purified even more by fire. Our precious stones will be purified even more by fire. And when we face to face, stand there in the judgment seat. Remember Revelation, they say that the eyes of Jesus are like fire. And those eyes will look at you. And will look and I say all that you've done. And if it's zero, it will burn. The first time I, I, I learned the scripture, when I was just newly saved, I was so terrified. Because what if, you know, uh, I thought I was doing all of these good things, good works for God. And then when I get into the judgment seat of God, and I stand there before the eyes of God, and Jesus looks at me, and he assays my lifestyle and the way I live. And I thought I've been doing all these wonderful things. And then I found out that everything that was, I was carrying was made of paper mache. And the minute he looked at me, everything burned. Just combustible and all. There's nothing. I'm still saved. But I've lost the opportunity of having invested all of those fussy little things to some of the nuggets of gold and silver and wonderful things that will remain. You guys see that? Yeah. And this is, this is wonderful that we will come into the place of God's judgment seat to be rewarded. But it is terrible if when we come into the judgment seat of God, we have nothing to show for our life. And whatever we will show will burn. Because it's straw, hay, and stubble. Guys, understand this? Because only those that can stand and weather the fire 
of the eyes of God will remain. Whew. I tell you, for two weeks I've been studying this, I mean, in this intensity, from this platform, I've been really walking in the fear of God. Amen. 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 And I'm even talking to the young people, the YG. Invest yourself in God. Thank you for investing yourself in God. And Marielle, you know, uh, they're investing themselves in God. The young people uh, spending time on top of, you know, having to go to school and study. And, uh, you know, they're busy and all that. But we always encourage them, put God first. I'll tell you, if you put God first, all of your lessons, all of your homework, you will speedily understand it. You will comprehend it. You will finish it as quickly, as quickly as you can because you put God first. Remember? Yeah. If you put uh, the kingdom of God first and my righteousness, all these things shall be added to you. Your homework, everything that you have to do for your studies, God will honor you because you put him first. Yeah. That is such a great investment. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. This is the meaning of that. Because as long as you are on earth, you can do this. You can rectify your work, your activities, your investment, how you spend your time, your life on earth. When you're dead, you cannot recover this anymore. This is the only place. And Jesus, when he looks at us, what will he see when he looks at you? The first time I heard this preaching from another preacher, I was just newly saved, and I was just terrified. Because I will be the only person. Every individual will just stand there by itself. You can point to your husband or to your children or you, to your boss that they did this to you. You, you. I could not study because I could not spend time with you, God, because my husband, I had to do it. No, not acceptable. Because he gave you everything that you have to have, empowering you to do what you have to do, Amen. to invest in eternity. Amen. All right, almost there. So we say that there's a reward in heaven. But this reward will depend on your, this reward will have different expressions and different degrees. So come with me, 1 Corinthians 15, 41 to 42. Depending on how, how close are you to Jesus? How near are you? How related are you? How obedient are you? And I, this is actually a preaching, a series of preaching that I want to teach us because I want us to be encouraged. If you're obeying God and you're all out for him and he is the boss of your life, I will tell you that your proximity to him will be so close. And the degree of your expression to him will be so bright and wonderful. Look at this. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. When you die and you're resurrected, the body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It will be immortal. But here, just like uh, uh, your glory, when you go up, depending on your obedience to God and how you are related to him and how you desire him and how you have known him and how he has known you will become the degree of your proximity to where he is. Look at uh, this other scripture in... Uh, um, Luke 19 verse 17 look at that remember the, the servants those that were given the talents remember mm -hmm. I just want to give us one example here in Luke 19 17 he said and he said to him uh, can you go verse 16 uh, this is the guy the three guys and he gave them different talents or mina and verse 16 said then came the first, it was the first guy, saying, Master, your mina has earned 10 minas. In other words, it increased the investment. The, the capital that he has given him has increased. He, he did something wonderful to it. And verse 17, he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in very little. I'm sure according to some, uh, some commentary, the 10 mina is a huge amount of money, all right? But God, in, in, the, in the estimation of Jesus, it's very little. Money is very little. It does really no big deal. Because you were faithful in very little, have authority over 10 cities. Your relationship with God 
your obedience with God, the lifestyle that you lived while you were alive here is going to give you, are you going to be given density or are you going to be a doormat? Because you did nothing. Everything you did is me, 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 mine. Selfishness. How many souls have you brought to the kingdom of God? How many have you shared the gospel to? How compassionate were you to the lost? Whenever we don't speak the gospel to somebody who have not known Jesus Christ, you tell them, go to hell. And we have been. We need to repent for telling people, go to hell, because we refuse to preach to them, because we're afraid to say the gospel to them, because we're afraid to present Jesus as Savior and Lord to them and relieve them of the lordship of the demonic forces over them. So you have authority over 10 cities. Okay? So that's part of your reward. The degree of your of the investment. What did God give you? Um, God gave me a lot. And I'm accountable for that lot. To them where much is given, much is expected in return. The accountability that I have to give to God is so much more than many of you think you have to account for. Amen. So the assignment, the authority, and the closeness that you have with Jesus will determine the proximity and the place where you will be with him. Your reward. What is your reward? God will give you praise. He will praise you. Look at this. I just want us to see this. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. What is it saying? Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then it's one's praise. What? Will come from your neighbor? No. It's one's praise will come from God. God will praise you. He says, well done. Amen. Well done. Good job, like what I would say. Francis, good job. good job. God will say, Jesus will say to you, good job. Good job. Not because you look cute, but because you're fervent, you're faithful, you're obedient. You love him and you love his word. You love people and you set them free by preaching to them the gospel. And then he will give you crowns. James 1, 12, just, just there and we will end. Promise. There's more, but we'll end. Look at this. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Are you enduring temptation? If you're not, endure. All right? For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Woohoo! If you read uh, Revelation 4, you will see that every time the, 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 the seraphims and the cherubims and the creatures in front of the throne of God will worship and will turn around with all the eyes all under their wings, all the elders, the 24 elders will bow and will be so enamored with God that they will remove their crowns and lay it at the feet of the throne of God. But God is going to reward you with crowns. Some people who have terrible, in, in heaven, I, some, some old timer preacher was saying that in, 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 in the day when Jesus comes, when we all face to face with him, some of those people that we see as televangelists, they're so glamorous on television, they have all of these members in their churches, and then, you know, God is not going to be amazed by them, but they will be, he will be going to this one little old lady, unknown, incognito, nobody knows them. Nobody knows their name, but Jesus knows them because they're intercessors. They're praying. They're going. They're standing in the gap. They're watching. They are watchmen. They're giving their whole life to God. He said that, you know, like, uh, what's the name of this guy? Billy Graham will not be judged by the number of thousands of people that fill the stadium. He will be judged by his own accountability. 
I will not be judged by what I do. I will be judged by my relationship with God. Amen. My obedience, my steadfastness, my faithfulness, my refusal to be tempted and to sin against God. Am I perfect? No. But my desire is to refuse, endure every kind and all kinds of temptation. I mean, and this is not temptation to rob the bank or go for adultery or, or start a war. No, but this is just unbelief, fear, doubt, unkindness. These are the temptations that we face. Unbelief, complain, murmur, doubt. Amen. Thank you for that one, amen. Buti na lang you there. So our intimacy will vary according to how much spiritual capacity we have mm. with God. Amen. And every time you come, this is a secret, which is now no longer a secret. Every time you come into the presence of God, you increase your capacity mm. to be with him. You increase your ability to hunger and thirst for him. You increase the, expand your, your, the, 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 the size of your heart into a heart that can feel a lot of people, a lot of mission, a lot of nations, a lot of things that will honor him and love him. I want to be a governor next to the governance of Jesus Christ. I want to work with him. That's what this is all about. Because after the return of Jesus, there will be a thousand years that we, we, we will live with him. And then after that, another I don't know what eternity is like, but it's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And the quantum never ends. You guys understand? Stand with me. There's more, okay? And so if you are watching this message, if you are, today I'm very, I've been up since three in the morning. For some reason, I just felt like I needed to really see God today. Because this message is not for the unconscious. <laughs> this is a message for the those that are determined to walk with God. Mm -hmm. And if this is the first time you've understood and reminded, you are reminded today that there is eternity. That after this life here on earth, there is a life that we will live forever and ever and ever. And as born again believers, as Christians, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, as his church, we are duty bound to understand the judgment seat of God. Yes. It is called the Bima of God. Bima means it is a platform where rewards are given to those who pass the test, those who win the prize. Amen. So Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. That your word will never return to you void. That, Lord God, your word will accomplish the purpose for which you've sent it. Your word is alive. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, so cut through our hearts. If there's any hardness there, will you shave it? Will you just cut those hardness in our heart and let the tenderness, the flesh that is in there, let your spirit bring it to life. Amen. Amen. And help us today to be touched by you. That we cannot just invest our lives for the things that will be destroyed. But we must understand. And by your Holy Spirit, we know we can do it because Jesus, God said, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who gave me the strength. Amen. So Holy Spirit, give us a revelation of the judgment seat of God, of our investment to life today. The, give us an understanding of eternity that we cannot fuss, we cannot be fretful of the things of the earth, but we can, Lord God, invest 
and get an understanding and a revelation and a depth of what eternity is all about. Amen. Even John, when he was given that revelation in Revelation 1, 2, and 3, after showing the church in the last days of what it will become and the rigors of Christianity and the attack of the enemy. On chapter 4, he asked him to come up here. Come into this high place with me. Come before my throne and experience the refreshing presence of my glory. See my throne. It will eclipse all that the enemy will try to do and attack you with. And so, Father... Give every person that unction, the anointing. Open the eyes of their heart. Open their ears to hear this message by your spirit. Not because I'm saying it, but by your Holy Spirit. Help us to be intent. Help us to walk in the fear of God. To give back our lives to you. To honor you. To worship you. To live for eternity. To think of that that will not perish. Amen. To think of that that will be forever giving you glory and placing us and positioning us into a nearness, into a proximity of where you are. Amen. Lord Jesus, today our lives we give to you and you open our, our hearts to understand, to humble ourselves before you. Submit to you, not in just the religious way, but in the truthful way, in the honest way. Help us to be naked before you. Help us not to hide, not to compromise, but to allow the privilege of you scrutinizing us, our lives, because you love us. We will know these things, Lord. We want to be ready when you return, Jesus. Amen. But we also want to be prepared to live in eternity. Yes. In your name, be glorified, Lord. Be magnified. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.